Hey there, good afternoon. It's lunchtime. Mind over matter, the psychology of trading. I had to reschedule into Thursday this week and I may need to look at scheduling uh, for a regular time. Had to move it a couple times since we've been open and I wanna find something that works every single week so it's dependable even though we do record it. Um, this session I've done weekly for about a year and a half and it's really geared around what we're seeing as far as emotion coming into trading, what we're seeing as far as people's frustrations and, and struggles with our traders, with ourselves. And so I always just take notes through the week and, you know, get a feel for what maybe is going on or what could be happening. Um, I wanted to actually continue this week's segment from last week's. There was something that Shadow mentioned. Um, he, he used the term, the hero complex, which I think a lot of us probably have, like I wanna, you know, show how good things are. And so um, talking about the hero complex, there's, when he mentioned it, are, are you here, Shadow? I just wanted to make sure. Absolutely. Okay. So for me, like the hero complex is I want to, I want to show how good I can do to my family to, you know, like, this is how much money I can make. And unfortunately, when I was a newer trader and not good at self-regulation, that would Put me in a position where I would continually add. So I would oversize, I would hold losers much longer because it'll come back. And I think that is what leads most people for me, for sure, into that. I, I want to show how good I am without looking at the reality of how you're actually executing. So it's like you pat yourself on the back a bunch. And, and if you're, I know you're still in your long trade. So if you have alerts or whatever, just, just interrupt me. Um, but it turned it into all of the rookie mistakes for me, because I wanted to show how good I could do, but I would ignore my losses and pump up the wins. And so one of the keys for me in overcoming that hero complex was being honest, which means journaling. So if it's handwritten on paper, if it's typed in a journal, however, you're going to look at it, it was definitely the key for me instead of like just ignoring it the losses would be gone and then it was like or the losses would be there and then i would just continue to lose and i'd have some wins here and there and it was that whole hopium like okay look now i can do it and then all of a sudden a series of losses and so overcoming that getting past it was what i wanted i think a lot of today's session to be about because we you mentioned it but you didn't really dig into it so i'd love to hear your take on that Um, yeah, for me, the, the hero complexity just starts from just I'm the, the breadwinner of the family, and the, I do work like 14 hours a day, seven days a week, and I got older kids, they're almost adults now, and all they've known is me as in the oil field. I got young ones, uh, eight years and younger, and... Uh, you know, and just seeing those two other kids grow up from the cell phone and every few months seeing them and stuff that I, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to repeat that all over again. Right. And just with the younger children. So the mentality was, you know, do trading and make money to offset working and so that I could be home every day and then everyone would be so happy and proud of me and, and, and proof to myself that, Hey, I made it. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, and it wasn't necessarily about the money. It was just about the time. Like being, For sure. Cause you like can't enough. get the time back. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so, but the problem is, is you know, it's cost of living increase and as uh, you know, just everything increasing. Uh, causing me to you know, need to make more and more and more and then the psychological effect that I need to make even more to offset what I'm making right now and then trying to hold trades for longer to make more money and then all the while that that's in the back of the head you know and, and it took a while to really dive deep into that and, and come to terms with it that that uh, the hero complexity is not so much it wasn't so much greed it was was so much about time and and then recognizing that 
the greed wasn't so much as money per se, but just the, the image I saw of myself with the money. Right. Um, you know, not having like Lamborghinis and stuff. I just wanted time. And that's what really, really offset me with that hero complexity for a good bit. Actually, that's why I joined uh, the last server was I was working on trying to overcome that. And then, uh, and everyone's different. I don't know about you. I, uh, mine well, wasn't so much about proving people wrong. It was just well, it wasn't. People. It wasn't proving people wrong for me. It was proving that I could do it, and then I continued yeah. to not do it. And then there was that whole concept behind. Well, are you wasting your time? Because if you were, and and this was while I was staying home with my kids. So when they were little, um, we we had the agreement that one would work and one wouldn't. Um, when we first got married, we decided that we didn't want to have someone else raise our children even if that meant that we would have less money. And so while the kids were little, my husband was working in the field, operating an electrical contracting company, and he was gone 13, 14 hours a day. And so what I was trying to do was balance it out. And it was interesting because like I mentioned before, my losses were insurance money. So they weren't, they didn't harm us financially from a, I took our nest egg and traded it away, but I did lose a nice chunk of insurance money that would have made life much more comfortable for us had I not done that. So that the wanting to prove that I could make it back is what created my, like, I, I want to, I want to help with this so that maybe he won't be out in the field for that 12 to 14 hours a day, that kind of thing. So like to help balance the family out. <clears throat> so maybe even the opposite end of, of yours, like you were gone and you were trying to trade, which wow. That's a lot of stress right there. Um, the The problem that I had was that I wasn't being honest of, about I was or not honest. I wasn't I wasn't thinking clearly about how my trading behaviors were impacting what the family needed to have, and that was me more present. So we go back to that because while Dad was gone, then I was trading and losing money, which was a mess. And of course they were little and, you know, playing in the yard and I'm, you know, sitting on a computer right there with them or whatever, but still, um, the, the idea behind not realizing that it was actually harming my family while I was trying to do it with real money, instead of paper trading and journaling and then trading small, all the mistakes that we all make to some degree for me had to happened because I wasn't paying attention to who I was really trading for and who you're trading for is your family, yourself, your future self, not to impress anyone right now, but to learn, to become proficient, to become consistently profitable, making small gains. And then with that consistency, then higher profitability. So super important that you're getting real clear on who you're trading for. You're not trading for glory. You're not trading for excitement. You're not trading for anything other than becoming a consistently profitable trader that will change the course of your family's destiny. And so that was a, was a huge turning point for me when I realized I needed to, I needed to trade for my future, for my kid's future and show them that you could go from a working class family to much better than working class and able to take trips when you want to. And while I don't travel as much as I'd like to, it's because I'm here with my mom and she's elderly and also it requires quite a bit of presence. And so, you know, it's one of those, we're still able to take weekend trips. We're still able to, to do a lot of the things that we want to do. But from a financial perspective, if we were able to family wise, we would be traveling a lot. And that's what I wanted was to be able to not have to budget out trips to go to Kauai, to go skiing, that kind of thing. I wanted to just be able to say, Hey, I want to go travel. I'm going to just go book my airfare. For me, the definition of doing well in your life is to not be worried about if you decide you want to go take a week ski trip, you're not worried about how you're going to pull the finances together. You just go book, book the airfare and you're like, dang, I should have thought about this like two weeks ago because that cost me a little more, but it, you're not worried about it. You're not trying to budget it. And, and like I said, I don't do that a lot. I'm not frivolous at all from a money perspective. The most expensive things that I have are like my trucks and my horses. I really, you know, we, we have a nice property, you know, but I really try to focus on 
I'm, I'm not doing it for the money. I'm doing it for the experience with my family. So we, when our kids were little, we skied every other weekend with them through the winter and we were out horse camping every other weekend or every third, it kind of, you know, kind of depends because homework and stuff like that definitely impacts how much you can travel. But even when, when they were little, I wanted to be able to provide the experience of being able to just go and enjoy the time off school, off work. And that's what we were, we were able to do. It just took me that turning point and it really was journaling to get past that concept of the minutia of this is how much money I've lost, the stress of that into I'm consistently profitable. And now we can keep stacking that money away. So I, I had posted a quote in the psychology risk management channel of, of quite a while back when this was still just my family server. And, and it's from William O'Neill. It says, no matter how much money you make, maintain a modest lifestyle and think about using the money as a tool to create peace of mind and to help others. Some get carried away and have big lifestyles to support, not for me. And, and that's, that's me. Like I don't go buy new cell phones every single month or every single year as they come out. I don't have, you know, the revolving door on vehicles. We have nice newer vehicles, but we don't turn them around all the time. And it goes back to the concept of keeping up with the Joneses that I never understood because you don't know anything about the neighbors or the extended circle or about what they're doing financially, other than the fact that they have a nice car and they wear expensive designer clothes. You don't know what the stress level is. You don't know what their credit card debt is. You don't know anything other than what it looks at looks like. So that saying of don't judge your insides by other people's outsides goes right into that. So I want to definitely encourage those of you who are maybe turning that corner to, you know, from losing trader to consistently profitable or now modestly profitable. So now it's break even or slightly better to not keep your head focused on, I'm going to make a lot of money. If you keep your head focused on, this is going to change my family's destiny. If I'm consistent, if I'm not blowing up accounts, if I'm not having these huge drawdowns, these huge swings back and forth, it will change my family's course long-term. And that's huge. And that's not, not just about putting, you know, money away so that there's money in savings accounts and money in IRAs and 401ks and all that fun stuff. It's making sure that your family understands money well enough, understands the cost of time and that you're enjoying your time with your family instead of just being focused on making money. And that actually uh, reminds me of my uncle. So my uncle owns, I have to think of how many he has. I think it's just shy of 40 Wendy's restaurants. He might've rolled over that 40 count. When I was a teenager, he had four. So he's grown his company that my grandfather put together originally pretty exponentially. He has four kids. They're all very close together. So four kids in five years, he started his family a little bit late in life. And he comes out and visits us with them by himself three or four times a year. We're really, really close. He's had stage four cancer for six years. So it's pretty good. He's, he's making it much longer um, than, than anyone anticipated. However, what, what struck me back in, I think, 2018, something he said to me, he goes, you know, you have such a great property all these animals around, these kids are being raised in this environment. That is what I think all kids should be raised in, you know, and, and he's like, kind of, kind of got carried away with it. And I said, well, not all kids. I mean, you, you have to be ready for the amount of work it takes to be able to maintain what we have. But I wanted them to have that experience of the animal husbandry taking care of, you know, that something else that can't feed itself, you feed it before you feed you kind of concept. And he said, man, I really messed up. And I said, well, what, I, don't, I don't understand. And he said, you did it right. You raised your kids with the values and with an environment that made them very well-rounded and very balanced now as I seeing them as teenagers. And my youngest and his youngest are the same age. That tells you how much later in life. I waited a little bit and he waited a lot um, to, to have them. So he said, you know, I, I messed up working too much 
spending too much time trying to grow the pot, trying to, you know, get everything built. And I missed my kids growing up, even though, you know, I was home at night and we took a family vacation every year. He's like, looking at what you guys do, you're, cause we took his kids out on camping trips with us and, you know, we'd come back with the pictures and he's like, that's the life right there. It's not about your one vacation a year that you take with the family for a couple of weeks and then you work the whole rest of the year and they go to school and you go to work and you meet at dinner and that's it. The experience that you have with your family as they're growing cannot be replaced. And I think that's that, that's what you're saying, Shadow, is that like you missed you missed it with your teenage or with the older kids and and you decided that trading was the potential for you to not miss that with the younger batch oh yeah yep just wisdom and, and kind of like in your situation too like my my goals is to have like big pieces of land mm -hmm. raise my kids in a, in a homestead environment and know and you know it, it all plays a role like all of our emotions go on trading and then when I hear people say like, oh, uh, don't trade with emotions and stuff, it's nearly impossible. Oh, you can't. You just have to be aware of them because yeah. we're humans. We can't just detach the emotions. We just have to make sure they're not running our trading accounts. Yep. And, and, and mitigating our shortcomings by you know, realizing, okay. And, and, and like you were saying, you have to be perfectly honest with yourself, you know, and, and even, I think I was like six months into trading and I, I, I started off very uh, uh, meager, like, because I watched someone else lose a lot of money. So I was just throwing $200 in once a month. Nice. And, uh, and it was like six months in, and I really had to prepare and really dig deep inside myself and say, is this something I really want to do? You know, I, because it does, it takes a lot of time, especially at the beginning, yep. learning everything, and figuring it out. And, uh, you know, and I did, I really looked in the mirror and, and, and I was probably staring in the mirror for a good few hours contemplating, you know, is this something I want to do? If so, then I need, I need to be honest with myself. I need, because at that point I wasn't really making, I was just losing the $200 every day. Right. But then after that point, you know, being honest with myself and then putting my foot down and, and digging my heels in, uh, you know, that's, that slowly the table started turning, you know, and I think that's probably huge too, is that commitment to oneself and, and realization and just holding up that integrity and honesty within oneself to just push themselves just a little bit. Cause it's, it's really close. It's, it's scary how close it is from, you know, losing a little bit of money to break even, to being a little bit of profitable, to being really profitable. Like, yeah. the, they're, like what Mark Douglas says, he measures it in like degrees, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's scary how close it is. And it's just those one little things that, that holds back each of those stages. So. Well, it's kind of like if you look at a ray on a chart, if you get the attachments wrong, let's say they're a month apart, 10 years ago, and you readjust them, but you leave that first line there, looking at the trajectory differences 10 years in the future, the ray that has the wrong, slightly different coordinates, which is degrees of difference, small degrees when they're close. But as you go further and further out, those two rays become further apart. So that's, you know, I, I talk about that in charting. You have to make sure that you're right. If you're catching, if you're wanting that trend line to be that diagonal to be usable if it's on a high time frame it has to be in the right place and that's exactly what you're saying is there's not that big a difference between those little fine movements when you when you figure out how to manage your mind how to like the head game of what trading is then the executions become much easier the frustrations become much less and that's not to say that you're not going to still have drawdowns and the the mind over matter from last week was dealing with rough patches there's always yep. going to be drawdowns there's always going to be some losing days i have not had a losing month in well over a decade and i measure that as consistently profitable i do have losing days 
everyone has losing days. So if you're allowing that to impact how you're executing, if you need to, you need to step back, figure out what's actually causing the, the mixed signals that you're getting or that, you know, what you're looking at. And that's always going to go back to journaling. So I don't know if you guys saw it, but, but shadow has his trader forge set up now inside the server. So you should have access to that right below the coffee break. Let me just double check. Yeah. So it's underneath the coffee break with the off topic and free chat and above the education, uh, books and videos category. If it's something that, that looks too, I mean, you definitely want to watch the videos. I went through all the videos and then realized that since I'm all Mac, I kind of need to just keep from a time perspective, need to keep just doing my journaling that I do in a spreadsheet for the alerted trades. However, if I hadn't just opened a new business, I would be using it right now because that was the plan coming into the spring. <laughs> we just got a uh, slightly sidetracked as far as time perspective. It is going to take some time for you to go through the videos, but the data that you can get out of it is unmatched anywhere in any tracking software because you can look at your metrics and you can adjust and you can figure out, should I change my stop from a hard stop of three points to four points, which is what shadow did recently. You can test things out. You can be aware of what your metrics are. If you're not measuring it, you can't change it because you have no idea where things went wrong. So whether it's time of day, whether it's the setup itself, you have to make sure that you're tracking journaling and reflecting on those trades. So if you're just writing the stuff down or just entering it in software, it I probably, okay. It probably doesn't help you to just write it down because then it's just arbitrary numbers. But if you're using that data to actually see, are there things that I can tweak? How can I be better at what this is that I've chosen for some people as a profession, for some people as a side gig? What can I do to make a difference in my family's life by being aware of what I'm doing is singly, I believe, the biggest change that you can make for the better in, in all of it. So if you want to talk about the Trader Forge, just a little bit, Shadow. Yeah, so Trader Forge, um, it an Excel program and it unlocks as you uh, evolve as a trader. And it was based on the premise for when I, from the very first day I started trading, I started tracking trades on Excel. And then over time, I just added layers and layers of you know, different tracking stuff. And, uh, um, and I, you know, I was, I was sharing screenshots people were asking if they could use it and stuff like that but um so I, I revised it and then i shared it with a couple people and it was just it was too confusing yeah and and because it was just so much and so i went back to the drawing board and i thought you know i didn't actually start at this point you know i started with a very simple tracker so um so I, I just went back and said, okay, I'll, I'll break it up into three sections. So you're learning it as like, you go, text. like you did when you yeah. created it instead of them getting full access, which at first I was like, dang it, I just want to see the whole thing. But then yeah. as, as, that, as you went through the videos, it definitely made a lot more sense that it was, you know, when you create something, you can see that bigger picture. But when you walk into something new, it's, well, it's like trading. You're, you have no idea what's going on and you just start picking at things. So I like that it, it evolves as you understand that program more and more. Yep. And, and, you know, I, I looked at other trackers online and stuff and the problem was is a lot of them didn't, they were just, it was just raw data input and right. raw data output. So like, you know, time and trade, uh, you know, win loss, profit and loss, like very generic, tracking and for me i like to track various data points along with my trade so like am i using a am i watching did i enter off a five minute candle and then i can track you know which trades i entered off the five minute candle and then did i enter a trade below or above or at b uh you know did i enter at support and resistance and 
I made it so that you could filter the data so you can sit there and fine tune it and say, you know, I notice when I enter at VWAP, at VWAP as support, um, I have like an 80% win rate or something like that. So you can fine tune your strategy even more. Which is the A plus set setup. Yeah, it's that yeah. learning what, what you're actually trading well over and over and what you're not trading well is as important. Don't trade it anymore or yeah, and if, and if you see like, uh, and you know, you can separate your longs and shorts. So like say on the flip side, if you were shorting uh, VWAP and then you looked at it and it shows that you have like a 30% win rate, uh, then you can sit there and say, you know, this isn't a profitable trade. Uh, I need to stop shorting at VWAP, you know, when it comes up to VWAP or something like that, you know, so, and then, and then uh, you know, that's the whole premise behind and then also being able to back test your trades with different risk management and seeing, you know, this one to one, uh, or two to one, three to one, or you can do scaling also like taking first and second profit targets and then just seeing the, the data, you know, cause like you can see your trade data, but outside of that, you don't really know like what's optimized for that, that strategy or that trades. Uh, specific kind of set of criterias so you can sit there and say you know what on a trend reversal um i have like a 50 percent win rate with a three to one but i've been taking two to one which has a 55 percent win rate which an extra five percent loss and you get an extra four points that's and you're making you know say over 100 trades you're making an extra you know five thousand dollars or whatever you know, that's substantial information to have uh, and, and vice versa. Like if you're kind of, you're trying to go for a two to one on a specific, specific strategy and it shows that you have like a 50% win rate, um, or 45% win rate, but on your one to one, you have like an 85% win rate and you're showing better profit, ideal profit on that. Then you can adjust and say, you know, I'm going to go ahead and start taking just one to one on this specific setup. And that that's, that's what I think I like about it. And I have been thinking about revising it uh, so that it would be compatible with Mac and Windows, and then also add a, a back testing for different stop losses other than your default stop loss that you use to track your trades in general. Awesome. And this is all, guys, he created this for himself to use. And then, you know, hearing that story, realizing how big of an impact it can have for other traders. And so, you know, if you're not somebody who loves a ton of data, you could just stay using, oops, um, you could just stay using hypothetically that first level instead of moving into level three. You don't have to be at the full oh, yeah. unlock everything. So if you get in there and you have questions about it, Shadow's super responsive. I'd love to see the questions actually in market talk so that other people um, you know, see that you're using it. And it's, this is not a paid software. This is something that's available to everyone, not just market mastermind members, everyone in the trading community can use it. And we decided, um, well, shadow decided I left the, left the decision up to him to not have it be only the, the members here can have the videos because I think it makes that big a difference in how you manage your psychology yeah. to have that information. And so whether somebody's a member here or not, they will have access to that. Yeah, it, it, the whole premise behind it was just to help other traders, you know, and, 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 and it was hard for me to grasp because for me on my perspective was I thought everyone tracked trip. Yeah. So <laughs> I wish, and I, yeah. And so when I came into a community, uh, you know, and I've already been trading for a while and this is, a, you know, last server was the first community I ever was. And I was, I was really taken aback by how many people didn't actually, traders didn't take and attract their trades. And if uh, I had to guess, it's like 90% of traders don't track their trades and it might even be more than that. It's a lot. Yeah. And, and so I thought, you know, maybe this will uh, help them out and uh, get them on right path you know and i mean it, it's not perfect but it, it works really well yeah uh, 
Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm excited know, it, it to hear just, about the um, the capability of including Mac because I am I am a walking Apple advertisement, unfortunately, or fortunately. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, I I did it purely, and that's why I made the videos 100. You know, watch the videos. Anyone can download it because it, to me it wasn't. I didn't make it to make money. I, I made it. I well, I originally made it for myself. Right. But then I made it to help other traders out because options that are out there are really crummy. And then the ones that you can get, they cost money. And I just, I don't, I don't feel like, I mean, anyone can make a, a tracker sheet if they just spend a few hours on yeah. YouTube. So. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I'm excited to see that up and live, um, live now. That's a beautiful thing. So, net out to just kind of recap when we're looking at tracking when we're looking at journaling it's so that you understand the impact of your actions and you can start to define that that number one trading setup or the a plus trading setup and ultimately long term skill beats luck and it's always back to probabilities so if you don't know what you're not doing well and what you are doing well it's going to be really hard to refine what that is so even if you're not using trader forge or you know just a just a basic spreadsheet or whatever you're using make sure that you understand that you want to include time of day in that you want to include what your setup was even if it's just a little note so you can start kind of catching what you know what are my losing trades are they always in the morning are they always because i'm trying to catch the falling knife by calling the top or calling the bottom, that kind of thing. That's the best way to deal with setbacks. If you're not consistently profitable, you should be journaling. And if you are consistently profitable, you'll be so much in the habit of doing it that you'll just keep doing it because it works like magic. So uh, reinforcing just back to write it down, write it down, write it down, and then look back at it. Because if you write it down and you don't reflect, you have no idea what went wrong other than some data there on that page. <laughs> so with that, I'm actually coming into my time. I need to hop off and get on a phone call, but I appreciate you guys hanging out with us for the day and being here in Market Mastermind. The whole idea is that we are stronger together as a community. So a trading team shares information and that's what I'm seeing and I'm absolutely loving it. So appreciate you all shadow. Thank you. And we will see you in voice shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Cedar. Much insightful. I appreciate you all being here also. Awesome. Swap these lines out of my face. <laughs> I'll, I'll catch you guys soon. <laughs>